Well, tonight we're going to be dealing with miracles out of a book that I read called The Grave Robber by Mark Batterson. Uh, actually, this is a new book, but I read it through my Kindle. So <laughs> I bought the book so I could hold it up like an evangelist and say, hey, I read this book. You can only you can buy it online for $19.95. Just kidding. But it is a good book. If anyone wants to read it, you're welcome to it. And... Uh, it's brand new. I haven't read this one. I read it from my Kindle. But uh, it's all about miracles. It's probably one of the... It begins to take and separate and work through the miracles we see in the Bible. And tonight they're going to talk about the... We're going to talk about the winemaker. The wedding feast. You guys know what that is, right? <clears throat> we all excited because a lot of times people begin to look at that that scripture and begin to justify why it's okay to drink because if he can turn water into wine so it must be okay uh i let god work that on your life because uh that's a whole nother subject but uh you gotta think about it he's he wrote uh, mark batterson in his book talks says this he says right now right at this moment it feels like you're sitting still right but you are, you are at a speed of 1,040 miles per hour. We are speeding through space at an average velocity of 67,108 miles per hour. That is not just faster than the speeding bullet. That's 87 times faster than the speed of sound. So what we're doing is we're actually moving. You thought, oh, I'm just going to come to church tonight. I'm going to hear about something really cool. That's cool. That cool. You think God who blew, spoke into existence this world and, and we're spinning and we're not spinning ourselves. We're literally moving faster than the speed. Of, that's a miracle. Mm -hmm. If you think about how you're created, mm -hmm. you're a miracle. And so as we get into this, I want you to understand how much of a miracle you are. Amen. Amen. Here's my point. You already believe God for the big miracles. The trick, trick is trusting him for the little ones. When I was a children's pastor, I feel as a children's pastor because the children's minister in our last church wasn't able to uh, do her job because she was pregnant and she was bedridden. And so my senior pastor got this idea that I did children's ministry in my very first church, so I should be able to pick up children's ministry no problem. That's not always true. So I found the most kiddest looking videos and curriculum that I could find to do that. But I remember this young kid goes, PT, uh, my cat is missing. And we don't know where he's at. Can you pray that my cat comes home? I'm thinking, that's got to be the silliest thing I've ever heard in my whole life. And so what happened was we prayed, about 35 little kids. Remember I talked about miracles that those kids prayed for me this morning when I was really sick. 35 little kids prayed, God, let that cat come home. Two weeks later, that cat came home. <laughs> And so this little kid gave a testimony about her cat or his cat coming home. Sometimes we think of these big, we want these gigantic miracles, but you know, God works even in the little ones, amen? And so we, we try to say, well, God doesn't really have time for those little miracles in our life, but he does care for them, amen? amen. Hallelujah. The King James Version, I love this, the King James Version 7... 183,137 words use the equivalent of, of the word miracle. That's a lot of miracles. Amen? You guys are real excited about this. Maybe you need a miracle tonight. Yeah. Amen. There has never been or has there never will be anyone like you. You are unique. You, your fingerprints, your, your, your fingerprint is unique. Even your thought process, even your brain sinking is different than anyone else. We all think differently, right? We have different perceptions. 
Amen? Woo! Because if there's one like another, even twins are different. They have different, even though you can't tell them on the outs what they look like, the difference, but there's different things even in them. So, miracles. Hallelujah. So if you have a Bible, it's going to be up here, John 2, 1 through 11. Here's what it says. We're talking about the, the wedding in, uh, in Cana, or Gal yeah, Cana in Galilee. I was going to use the same thing. It says, on the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now, both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. Jesus said to her, woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet to come. <coughs> Hallelujah. There's still more. His mother said to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. Let's stop right there. You want a miracle in your life? Whatever the Lord says to do it. I read a, a, of a re, evangelist, a revivalist, where the Lord spoke, this is back in the day, spoke to this evangelist and said, sock that person in the stomach. So, really, you know, you really have to have a lot of faith to do that. Well, that person was suffering from stomach cancer. So this evangelist went, Boom! And that person was healed of stomach cancer. I'm thinking, in this day and age, you get sued for that. Even if that person was healed, someone would say, that's suable. But when there's a miracle, sometimes we say, God, um, okay. But that's a little weird. But when God calls us to do something extraordinary... Are we willing to do that? Are we ready to let God do the miracle within us? He's already the miracle worker. We're talking about how he changed water into wine. Are we ready to say, God, I'm ready to be used? We're all unique. We're able to reach different people in different ways. But what about the miracles in your own life? Are you trying to weigh them in, on the weighing scale? Oh, well, this is pretty big. God can really handle it. Or are you trying to say, ah, well, you know what? God can handle whatever he wants to handle. I mean, think about it. Maybe what you're going through maybe not be that, that big a deal. But God can handle it. God can bring a miracle in your life. It's amazing. Let's continue. Now there were set... Now there were set... There are six water pots of stone, according to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing 20 or 30 gallons apiece. Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. Hallelujah. And he said to them, draw some out now, and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. First you have here, Jesus says, fill the water pots up to the brim. Fill it up. And then scoop out the very first and take it to the master. Think about that. They're thinking in their mind right off the bat that they're taking a cup of water to the master. But in the midst of this, there's a miracle happening. Jesus is turning the water into wine. What about your pots? What is God doing in your life right now? Is he changing what you have into something better? Back in, the, back in the day, wine was used because the water wasn't that, that clean. How cool is that? Hallelujah. Let's continue. When the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and did not know where it came from, but the servants had drawn the water new, who had drawn the water knew the master of the feast called the bridegroom. And he said to him, Every man at the beginning sets out the very good wine. And when the guests have, have well drunk, then, then the inferior 
you bring out the inferior, you have kept the good wine until now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. For nearly 30 years, the one who crafted the universe with his voice, crafted furniture with his hands, now cr crooked table legs, every came out the carpenter's shop in Nazareth. I love that. He was good at what he did, but he wasn't just the master carpenter. He was God. Wouldn't you agree with me that it, it would have ranked as history's best kept secret? How for 30 years... Do you keep the this secret, your ability to do th these kind of things, these kind of miracles? But that all changed the day water blushed in the face of the Creator and the wood bender became a water bender and he mutated the mo molecule structure of water and turned it into wine. Not just wine, fine wine. Not just a little, but 757 bottles of wine. How amazing is that? In the Bible, there's 34 distinct miracles that are recorded in the Gospels. John Gospel spotlights seven miracles. So what we're going to do is we're going to be developing these miracles and talking about miracles. But tonight we're talking about the wine at the, at the wedding. So think about it. He took water, turned into wine, and then he said, the bridegroom, come. The master said, the bridegroom, come. So think about it in your own life. When God made you, he took care of you. He created you. He made you in such a unique way. And I, and I keep using this, that you, each one of you in this room is a miracle. You'll hear me say it throughout this whole time. It's because the study is that he created oxygen. When he blew in the world, he created oxygen. Hallelujah. Who would thought trees would be that important? He pulled, created mosquitoes. Nobody really likes them because we like to kill them. But he created them. There must be a reason. Shrimp. 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 Okay. He created everything that we need. You think about it. If we didn't have internet, we could survive. If we didn't have trees, if everyone cut out all the trees, it would be more difficult. What about water? If we didn't have water, we would die. We need that. But all the different molecules, and how many different species has to have water to survive? Miracles. When you walk out these doors, do you not see a miracle? I mean, it's just amazing to me that, that we can just look at the Bible and say, oh, there's miracles, but we should be able to walk out the door and say, there's a miracle. When you walk in your house, God gave the wisdom to somebody to create that house and know how to do that. Not me. I blow up houses. But God created something. God used something. There's things that you can do that I can't do. God used you for something. I remember growing up, my, my desire was to be a professional basketball player. <laughs> Never made it. Got fat, sassy, got kicked off the basketball team. Went to college, tried to play basketball. And that was my only aspiration. I was going to become a basketball player. Not a pastor, a basketball player. I wanted to make millions of dollars. And then so when I couldn't play basketball anymore, I wanted to be an accountant. Well, that sounds pretty exciting. <coughs> Never thought at all in my mind, even though God called me at four years old to be a pastor, never did I desire or even think that God could use me. And see, sometimes we get in that mindset that how can God use me to that, do that kind of thing? But God can use you however he desires. Why? Because you're a miracle. In the Bible, it talks about that we become vessels of honor. 
And, 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 and when God desires to use a vessel of honor, if we say, God, I will do whatever you call me to do, a vessel of honor, that, that means that you're opening up, say, God, I, if you want to use me. There's empty pots in this, in this, in this uh, the wedding of Cana. Empty pots. And Jesus said, fill those up with water. See, sometimes we as Christians, we get empty like those pots. We pour out, we pour out, we pour out. And we need to go to the bridegroom to get filled back up. Because we get so caught up in, in giving, giving. And sometimes we need just to spend some time with the bridegroom and get filled back up. Now, I'm not going to say that you're going to be uh, wine, but you might be fine. That's a good one for you. But being willing to be filled up like that and then be used again. But then in Scripture again, it talks about pots again. It talks about vessels. It talks about how he is the potter and we're the clay. I'm jumping all over the place because this is what the Lord wants, to, he wants you to hear. Is Sometimes we get to a point in our life that our vessel, us, becomes broken. Things begin to happen. Things begin to make us crackpots. And sometimes the Lord needs to remold us. That's a miracle. And sometimes as we submit to whatever God wants to mold us into, and then he can fill us back up. But we have to come to the point of saying, God, I want to be used by you. That's a miracle. This is good stuff. Just, just understanding how much God wants to use you. Two parts of hydrogen is one part oxygen, and the most basic chemical compound on earth, almost the, the most vital, it covers 71% uh, water. 71% of our planet comprises 65% of, of you, our water. Did you know that? You're a bunch of water. <laughs> I love that. Water has caloric value, yet it is absolutely vital for metabolism. I'm going to drink a lot more water. Hallelujah. You won't last more than two or three days without it. It is flavorless, but nothing tastes better on a hot summer day. You think about it. What is greater than having a large glass of water with ice in it on a hot, hot day? Water is the universal solvent. It is fun fundamentally to photosynthesis. It puts out fires and water else would we, we would swim in. When was the last time you thanked God for the miracle of water? So before we get to the wine, water itself is an absolute miracle. In 1934, a Danish carpenter turned toy maker named Ole Kirk Christensen created a company called Playwell, an English Lego. Their motto is, the best is never too good. That's a, be that's a pretty good en encapsulation of the this, this story. The master of ceremonies put it this way to the bridegroom. Everyone serves the good wine first when people have drunk freely, then the poor, the poor wine. But you have, yet, you have kept the best wine until now. Jesus didn't just save the day, he made the day. And that's what he does in our lives. Amen? Huh? I bet that bridegroom was standing there like, what just happened? Right. Your body. Your body is pretty much basically compared to that. 99% is just six different atoms. Did you notice that? I'm sure Eric did, did. He probably read the book on it. Six different atoms. Because I, when I ride with Eric, he, he gives me knowledge. He, I like just sitting there. I could just sit and listen to him for the whole ride along because he just, did you know this? Oh, sure, I do that. <laughs> but the amazing thing is, there are seven octillion atoms in your body. That's seven times, seven times ten to the 27th power. I don't do math. And every single one of them is subject to the authority of the Creator. 
Every atom in the universe is subject to the God who created it. He made the laws of nature. He can break the laws of nature. You think about, he could call you anytime. He could use you. If you are submitted, every atom in your body is submitted to him, he can use you the way he wants to use you, right? He can change what you're supposed to do. He's called you. If he has all authority, remember, I, I read another book by Mark Batterson called All In. And the book All In means that every part of you, every ounce of who you are is all in to follow Christ. Awesome book. Pick it up. Right next to Grave Rock. It's a miracle because God can use us to do different things. He can call you to pray for somebody and they can be healed. He can call you to do something that you thought you'd never be able to do. I live that every day. Every single day. I, I never thought I was going to do this. You are created. A.W. Tozer said, A long view of God is the cause of a hundred lesser evils, and a high view of God is the solution to 10,000 temporal problems. I think God has 950 million solutions for your problems. If we can learn to submit to His authority in our lives, we would see Him do some unbelievable things like turning water into wine. So I want to just encourage you. Look at yourself more than what you perceive yourself to be. You're a miracle. Turning water into wine is not as great as what he has done in you. You're amazing. And so as we continue on with this, series there's going to be more information but i want you to this offset is to begin to look at who you are in christ you're amazing god did not bring you here just to set up camp and say god you're great and i'll praise you but you know here's my big problems i'm not going to give you my little one he wants it all well let me pray for you Lord, I thank you so much. I praise you for what you're, you taught us tonight by the simple passage of Scripture, turning water into wine, and, and, and how important water is to us to survive. But Lord, mostly, and more importantly, is how you're most important for our survival. And Lord, I thank you for encouraging each one of us, Lord. I pray that you bless everyone, give them a great week in your name. Amen. God bless you.